somehow I gave it some thought. One day, as I was seated there, I said to myself, I really used to enjoy the time when I was 11 or 12 years old. And that was about maybe 40 to 50 years ago. So you add up, you know what's my age now, yeah? And in those times, life is so much simpler. Would you agree? And that's why I began to develop it, and I came up with this title, Living a Life of Simplicity. Living a Life of Simplicity. But Jason Sia is the one who helped us to always put up this uh, graphic and all. When he showed me this, I said, yeah, this is simple enough. Then I told him, if we want to go one more step simpler, I said, oh, I should have used the mattress on that wooden floor. How many of you stayed in those conditions before? Where you have, you know, wooden floors and you just put mattress on it. That is really simple, you know. But this is a little bit higher, but it's still good, Okay. So tonight, very quickly, we have baptism, so I should end by 6.15 or 6.20. So that's why I'm switching to this mic, so that I will stay close to what I have on my notes. To start with it, let's read from Matthew chapter 6, okay? Verse 25 to 34. Read it together along with me. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of this. If that is how God clothes the field, grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So, do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own. So tonight, if I were to ask you, what is a simple life? How would you describe it? What is a simple life? Would a simple life be one that you live in a house with a big garden, you can grow your own vegetables, have your own chickens and what else and what not, you don't have to go to the grocery stores. You don't have to go to the supermarket. You are self-contained. In fact, you walk wherever you go. Is that a simple life? Kind of, kind of. You can say that too, all right? How do you describe it, a simple life? That's why I said before when I started, I remembered when I was 10, uh, 11 or 12, life was really so much simpler. We get up in the morning, we dress up, we go to school, we, do, we learn whatever it is, and then by one o'clock, we come home. True? Stan is nodding his head. When we come home, we take a shower, we have our lunch, and we do our homework. And we'll do our homework until maybe about four o'clock or so, then we are all ready for football. We will go to the field or we'll play whatever game it is. And we'll play maybe about 6 o'clock or so. We come home. We take a shower. We have a dinner. And at that time, we don't have a TV at home. So I would peek into my neighbor's house and they would have a black and white TV. 
In fact, my neighbor is an elder in the true, God, true Jesus church. And you know, the church, anyway, I'll leave the church alone. So he's an elder in the true Jesus church. So I would peek and I would run over and we would sit right in front of the TV. If it's on, we will watch. And we will watch, mo not movies, series of stories like, how many of you know High Chaparral? Put your hand up. Okay, you know how old or how young are all these people? <laughs> if you know about High Chaparral, about 15 of us, you are minimum 50 years, 55 and above. If you say, what kind of story is that High Chaparral? You know? That was the cowboy story of that time. Right, Pastor Stephen? The cowboy story. So sometimes you will walk halfway and they're tired, they switch off, we will all come back grumbling, you know, cannot finish the story. But that's what life is all about, simple. Or sometimes you will go catch spider. How many of you have gone and catch spider before? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, also about ten. Who go catch spider nowadays? Nobody. If you ask all this, catching spider was really so interesting. You guys miss those ages. But we also got our whacking. One day, I remember, I went and got caught. Seven o'clock came back, got good whacking because I came back so late. Did it stop me from catching spider? No. But I go again. But this time, I come back on time. That's what you call a simple life. Compared to when? Compared to now. Today, our world is complicated. Don't you think so? Our world is really, really moving so fast. And if I were to ask you one more time, the title, Living a Life of Simplicity. What is simplicity? So I put a couple of reasons here. Maybe you may have more. And maybe it's a better way to define Simplicity, identifying what it is not. Simplicity is not simply living. Simply living is when you have no directions. You have no purpose. Simplicity is not living simply. Living simply is you just don't care. Eat whatever you do. Don't take care of your body. Just do what you like. That's simply or living simply. Simplicity is not empty possessions or empty purchasing. In other words, you don't buy things. You are against owning properties or whatever it is. Simplicity does not mean you don't like money, all right? Or people who have much of it. Simplicity is not the desire to be poor, to remain simple as you are. Today, a lot of people are looking for simplicity. They want clear direction and purpose in life. They want to have a roadmap that would help them live for that which is most important. Church, there are a lot of noise and clutter around us. In fact, maybe in your own lives too. So much of noise and clutter that it creates in you a disequilibrium and it leaves you feeling exhausted. Maybe I should ask you a question now. I just want to see a show of hands. How many of you Sometime just this week alone, just this week, you would have made a statement to say, I am exhausted. Anyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Behind? None. I can see your hand. I saw your hand. How many of you would have used that word to say, sometime this week, I am overwhelmed? Only one. So far, okay. Still going. How many of you have said, I am overscheduled? Ah, so far, none. This one sure got one. The last one. How many of you said, sometime this week, 
I am stressed. Ah, now, now. Honesty, how many of you said, I am really stressed out? Pastor Li Ping is the one I'm going to see her hand. <laughs> anyway, since I mentioned her, I think it is good that I also have to make a confession. <laughs> Yesterday in the office, now this has nothing to do with the, the sermon at all, totally nothing. But if you say nothing, what you say? But I think maybe it may help one or two of us. Really, really. I thought whether I should talk about it, but I think I should. Yesterday, Pastor Li Bing was really preparing for today's seminar. We had a wonderful open session last night, an excellent session, seminar on inner healing and deliverance by Reverend Pam Sievert and the mother, Sister Margaret Sievert. Tomorrow morning, I tell you, friends, come, come for the 9 o'clock service in CCC. You will really be blessed by Sister Margaret Sievert. Even if you say, I attended service today, enough. No, it's not enough. Come, come and listen to what God has laid in her heart to talk to you. Really, I exalt you. I encourage you. Don't miss tomorrow morning. You will be glad that you, come, you came tomorrow. You'll be coming tomorrow morning. So anyway, coming back to Pastor Li Ping. She's hiding her face now, all right? I was trying to print something. And two persons I know who could help me was my wife and Pastor Li Ping. So I thought maybe I, my wife wasn't working yesterday. So I asked another two or three staff. They came and looked at it, and they couldn't help me. So in the end, I sent an email to Pastor Li Ping. I said, can you help me print this? Because somehow I couldn't. And she said, I'm so stressed out. You know, call somebody or call your wife. I said, she's not working. If I could, I wouldn't ask you. But nevertheless, she was very kind. She did it, and she came over. But by the time came, I was telling myself already, need help, look to somebody, cannot get help. What kind of uh, teamwork is this? I really was that. I was upset. I was really upset. And then after that, she texted me through the day, you upset with me. Huh? I didn't reply. Was I upset? Yes. But outside saying no. Inside saying yes. I really was. I was upset. And then in the evening, we both were assigned to receive the guests. She could tell from my countenance, not the smiling type, you know, the short word, yes, no, da, 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 whatever. But I tell you what, God spoke to me, not last night. I was thinking, go anger last night, cannot, you know, but what to do? Still angry. But this morning, I woke up at 6 o'clock, I prepared my sermon again, looked through, at 6.35, God, I cannot laugh. I have to say something nice to her. So I text her at 6.35 a.m. She may be still awake or she's asleep, I'm not. Blessed morning to you. <laughs> Everything will be well in the seminar. Many, many will be blessed. And she came back and gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> Why? Because I need to get right. Thank you, Pastor Li Bing. This is what you call clothed on, humility. Anything to do with simplicity? Well, anyway, you clap. I think the message is for one of you, all right? We are stressed. We somehow are so cluttered in our life, we desire a life of simplicity. 15 more minutes. Charles Wagner. Charles Wagner wrote this book, The Simple Life. And who is Charles Wagner? Charles Wagner was a former Reformed French pastor. In his book, I want you to read this line. He said, amid the confused restlessness on modern life, our wearied minds dreamed of simplicity. What is amazing is this. He wrote this 
1895. Not 1985. 1895. 1895. And if he could pen these words amidst the confused restlessness of modern life, our weary mind dream of simplicity. 1950, no, 1895. It was even before aeroplane was invented. Aeroplane was invented in 1903. The television was invented in 1927. The computer, 1938. The internet, the www, 1983. If I'm wrong, I have to, you have to blame Wikipedia, all right? That's where I got all those dates. The world is not going to slow down, friends. Technology is not going to go away. 24-7 access to everything is here to stay. Today, you and I live in a day of options overload. Options overload. Because of the speed of life and the lifestyle we are in, more and more options are hitting at us and we are having less time to decide on which is the best for us. The biggest challenge for you and me today, living today, is how to adjust to a continual increase of complexity in our lives. Options overload. I went to a supermarket. Let me show you some pictures that I snapped. That day I was in a supermarket. Look, how many choices of drinks that is there? You want to buy a drink, you got 7-Up, you got 100 plus, you got whatever else is there. Let's see another one. You want to buy a can of soup? Also got so many. Different brands, different whatever ingredients it is. Let's look at another one. Want to have a good breakfast? Also Susa. Look at the amount of brand. Raisin brand, fiber one, shredded wheat. I don't know which. Just give me one, I can eat it for breakfast. And the last one. Ah, this is what I like. This is my favorite, all right? Look at the amount of chips. The one that I like is ruffle, okay? So that's the one that I always buy. We are filled with options overload. And today, I ask you, so many choices. And you know what? You have made the right choice of being here today. You have made the right choice of being here today. You know, I'm sure you and I are the same. Every day, we are rushed through so many things, whether it's at home, in our place of work. But you know what? When I was preparing this, it got me to thinking, really, why are we in church tonight? Yeah, we've been told we come, we worship God, we listen to the Word of God, we get encouraged. But do you realize you have made a choice that you are seated here today, you are not washing clothing, you are not wiping the tables, you are just seated here and blocking off everything else and just want to set this time before God, from all your daily routines, some of you will be thinking, what am I having for dinner afterwards? But it doesn't matter. <laughs> but the important thing is, you have blocked this time to sit here just to be in the presence of God and to spend this time before God. So having said that, I urge you, brethren, if you have a handphone, don't let that handphone distract you. The minute when we come into a service, we should switch our handphone off. Put it somewhere that you would say, 
I will not take out this handphone to read WhatsApp, to see what messages I have. Or even how bored... No, the preacher cannot be boring. If it's boring, you are not listening, all right? I cannot say preacher is boring. Leave that handphone alone. And let this time be a good time that you will sit before God because that's the reason why you are here. What do you say? And now I close with just 10 minutes. How should we live a life of simplicity? You want to know? Sometimes you may have more, but I just think of three. All right? Three simple ones. How to live a life of simplicity? Number one, you need to be clear about who you are and who you are not. Many voices can shape our identity and lead you into confusion. We live the life that others want us to live rather than the life that flows out of God's purposes. That's the important thing. You need to have clarity on who you are. You need to know who God has made you to be. To live a life of simplicity, you need to know who you are, what God has made you to be, what kind of gift that He has bestowed onto you. You don't live your life based on what others say you should be or who you are. But you should know who God has said or made you to be. Sometimes things, opportunities that come along our way. Many a times we, we value the opportunity to what? You can gain from it, which is good. But more importantly so, you should evaluate that opportunity for who you are, whether it is right for you or not. And in so doing, church, you would definitely find life would be simpler. So the call to you tonight is, you may need to do some reflection on who you are at the call of your being. Perhaps you need to make a good decision to stop living for everyone else's expectation and start living and being true to who God has made you to be. Amen? Amen. Point number two. Be responsible. If you want to live a life of simplicity, the second step is being responsible. In other words, you need to take ownership of your own life. You have to face the fact that the life that you're living today is the result of the decisions that you have made yesterday. So friends, many a times we find that complexity and clutter in our life exists because you have allowed it to be there, all right? Sometimes we face circumstances that we don't control, but we have more control of the situation than we are willing to admit. Even though we don't have control of the situation that come into our lives, we do have control over how we respond to the situation. So here, number one, know who you are and what God has made you to be. Be responsible. Be responsible. And to live a life of simplicity, the third area, identify the higher yes. What do you mean by that? Identify the higher yes. Once you are clear about your purpose and your identity and what you value, you will then put a hedge around it. 
a wall around it. And one of the best practices that you can learn to say is the word no. No. Part of our challenge is that sometimes we want to do everything, but we cannot do everything. Take note of this. Every no needs to be rooted in a higher yes. Every no has to be rooted in a higher yes. The yes means it's your purpose, your values, your calling, your talents. No to World Cup matches. 8 o'clock one is okay. 11 one also little bit lah. But 2 o'clock, no, no. Tomorrow is Sunday morning worship. So no 2 o'clock World Cup matches. Maybe another one. Saying no to an invitation could be rooted in a higher yes of being in your kids' program or maybe your kids' concert. Maybe a client invited you for a meal, a dinner. If you say no to it, because why? Your kids' school is having a concert. That's more important. A no here brings you to a higher yes. In fact, I wanted to ask Pastor Stephen if I could share this. He came straight into my mind when this illustration was given. Can I? Sure, he said, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're going to say. You know, Pastor Stephen's mom is in a nursing caring home because she needs the medical help. I have heard him say it once, twice. He has been invited out for lunch and he would say, no, I need to go visit my mom because tonight I may not be able to. That is a no to a higher yes because he sees even that invitation for that lunch, I think I need the visiting of her mother is more important. That's what I'm trying to say. A no to a higher yes. I want to show you something. I can't preach without a video. <laughs> That's what they always say. Pastor Peter will ask me, got video? Ah? Got video? Yes, got video. I saw this video and it touched my heart. Because it touched my heart, I believe it will also touch your heart. If we can have that, read the words on this video because it's very important, all right? It's a bit lengthy, but read it and I will say no more. Thank you. 
believe so. In fact, I want to add one more. It says your, your, your children, your spouse, and something like that. In fact, one more category, your parents. Sometimes, some of us have aging parents or grandparents. They just miss us talking to them. Let's remember them, yeah? Closing. Conclusion. An equation for simplicity. 3C equals simplicity. The 3C is not Calvary Convention Center. It stands for clarity, courage, and your calendar. Clarity, courage, and calendar. Clarity means what are the things you really value. What are the must-do things in your life? Courage, have the courage to move towards simplicity. Will you resolve and have discipline for yourself to recalibrate your life around that which is important? And it takes courage to do that. And lastly, calendar. The calendar helps us. It is not to control us. So tonight, as we close, somehow I have said much, but for some good reason or whatever reason, maybe it's not a good reason, for some reason, you couldn't remember what has been said, what it's all about. I just want you to remember this thing. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything else would fall into its place. If you are wanting to live a life of simplicity, memorize this scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything will fall into His place. Let's bow our head. Everything hinges on us maintaining God first. Nothing must come before the kingdom of God. A life of simplicity is to not have anxiety and worries over your material things, what you possess. A life of simplicity is to use whatever wealth that God has given to you for Him first. A life of simplicity accepts everything, everything that you have is a gift from God and a life of simplicity accepts God's care of what we have and a life of simplicity acknowledges admits or affirms that everything that you own should be made available for others. That's what a life of simplicity is. To acknowledge that all that you are, all that you have, is from the Lord. And whatever you have, you will not worry over it, but you will use it so that it can be a great blessing to those around you. And a life of simplicity comes when you acknowledge God to be first in everything concerning you. And tonight, with our heads bowed, just before we move to the baptism service, as you are seated there, that's where your altar will be tonight. How many of us tonight would say, God, 
I need your help to live a life of simplicity. To recognize who you are and to and whom you have made me to be. That I will be responsible for this life that you have given unto me. And I would know how to prioritize what's important. Anyone, if that's a challenge that you're meeting, just lift that hand. We won't ask you to come to the front. Just lift that hand. That's where your altar will be. Or maybe there's some of you, you are facing a great challenge tonight. You are facing a situation, a mountain before you. And you are saying, God, I need your help to overcome this. I need your help. If you need prayer, lift that hand. And as you lift that hand, that hand is telling God that you need God to help you in that situation. And lastly, we are having options overload. So many things are hurting at us. So many options. Maybe tonight you need to make a decision. You need God to help you to make a decision over a situation or whatever it is. And you need God's help. Lift that hand and we will pray for you afterwards. I see hands. Let's all stand. And those of you who have lifted their hands, you know this is the best time for you to just talk to God. Tell God what the situation is. God hears your prayer. And even before I invite Pastor Stephen to come and pray for all of us, and we move into the time of water baptism, each one of us, just lift your eyes to the Lord. Lift your hand and just commit yourself to God for that very need that you are coming before Him and believe that God is going to touch you and meet your needs. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. I want to pray for, pray for clarity of purpose in our lives because I think that's what determines everything else. As Pastor Raymond has said, it is our values that will help us make decisions. And the creators of all guidelines to that value is Matthew 6.33. To just seek God first. The ways of God. Plans of God. Priorities of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a very, very relevant, needful, and timely message, Father. Indeed, we are people who are smothered by busyness and muchness, Lord. So often, we do suffer from options overload, as Pastor Raymond puts it. Father, we ask for clarity of thought. We ask for purposeful living the way that you have created us to be, Lord. May Jesus be Lord of our lives and may he be the one that will help us to live lives which are meaningful, purposeful, for your kingdom's sake, Father. And we know that as we do that, you will take care of every relationship, Father. But tonight we also want to pray for our families, Lord. How clearly it has come to us that many times we are together physically but so distant, Father, emotionally from each other. So distant, Father, in our communication with each other. I pray for every family that's represented, Lord. Not just mom and dad and kids, but also like Pastor Raymond says, granddad and grandma and the extended family. Today, Father, will you help us see that it is not an option to love those in our lives. It is not an option to care for those that you have put in our lives. But above all, Father, we want to do your will.
going to sing this song in closing.